In this video, we'll be discussing RMF Task 3.1 Security Control Implementation. Task 3.1 Task 3-1 is in the Implement stage of the RMF or Step 3 and is in Step 2 and 3 of the SDLC, Development and Acquisition and Implementation. The primary role responsible for this task is the Information System Owner or the Common Control Provider. These roles are supported by the Information Owner or the Information Steward, the Information System Security Officer, and the Information System Security Engineer. In this task, we ensure that controls are implemented in a consistent manner with the Enterprise Security Architecture and the Enterprise Architecture meaning that the controls and the systems, software and hardware that you're planning on implementing will work well with the architecture that currently exists in your environment. In doing this, we focus on security controls that are targeted for implementation in the information system, as part of subsystems in the information system, as inherited controls, and as hybrid controls supporting the information system. It's important to take note of those controls that will be implemented only in a specific component of the system that may be used by the entire system or that may be only used by that component. Control implementation works in balance to ensure that all the controls are implemented and they're all accounted for. Organizations should use best practices to implement security controls. Some of these include security engineering methodologies, security engineering principles, and secure coding techniques. Organizations should also ensure that mandatory configuration settings are established and implemented and that the information system security engineers follow sound engineering principles and processes. When available, use products that have been tested, evaluated, or validated by an approved independent third-party assessment facility that satisfy minimum assurance requirements when implementing security controls. Assurance requirements are directed at the activities and actions that security control developers and implementers define and apply to increase the level of confidence that the controls are implemented correctly, operated as intended, and producing the desired outcome with respect to meeting the security requirements for the information system. Some security requirements address the quality of design, the development, and the implementation of security functions. For higher impact systems in situations where specific and credible threat information indicate the likelihood of an advanced cyber attack, additional assurance measures are considered. This includes areas where you have potentially high value targets. To best deploy common control implementation, the information system security engineer should coordinate with the common control provider for the best way to apply the common controls. Some management, operational, and or technical controls may not be required at the system level. Some common controls may require additional components implemented at the system level to fully implement the control. Deferred controls, that is, controls that will be addressed later in the system lifecycle, must be identified and revisited in a later part of the SDLC. To correctly document common controls in the authorization package, system owners can refer to the common control provider's authorization packet, and deficient common controls should have compensating or supplemented controls implemented at the system level to compensate for the deficient control. This is identified as assessment in step three. Initial security control assessments, also referred to as developmental testing and evaluation, during the information system development and implementation. Conducting assessments during development and implementation helps reduce the cost of remediation of deficient controls. Conducting assessments early in the system development allows deficiencies to be corrected before the independent assessment of the system. This ensures items that cannot be corrected can be referred to the AO for resolution. In this video, we reviewed alignment of the implementation task with the SDLC, determined responsibility for this task, discussed control implementation, assurance requirements, 
and common controls, as well as assessment of controls in step three. If you like this video, be sure to click on the thumbs up and comment below. Subscribe to the Cyber Recon channel and click the bell to be notified when we publish new videos. This video is part of the Cyber Recon RMF lab and training environment. Like all the training provided by Cyber Recon, our RMF training is built on the principle of multimodal training. Multimodal training exposes the student to training concepts in different ways, including learning games, video interaction, practice quizzes, instructor interaction, and hands-on experience in an environment that simulates working through the RMF in a real organization. This training also includes an updated RMF book and lab guide. Want to try out multimodal training for yourself? Click on the link on the right for a no-obligation trial of this training experience, including access to all of the multimodal training for Step 1 of the Risk Management Framework training program.